the Expression Builder might actually be the most important tool for beginners in GDevelop. So let's check out the Expression Builder, starting with how to find it. In the event sheet, when you create an action that can use an expression, like the rotate action, you'll see a button for the Expression Builder to the right. Now if I put a 1 in this text box, the blade rotor object will rotate at a speed of 1, but I can change that so that it's affected by something in the scene. And so I can multiply it, and then open the Expression Builder, and in here you can find everything from the width of an object, to the angle, and even something like the distance between two objects, which we're going to use in this example. So if I click on that, I'll be given this screen, that's going to help me build the expression. So I'll set the first object to the blade rotor, and the second object to the blue player object that's in the scene, and then press apply. And this will put that expression together for me. So if I didn't know that blade router dot distance in brackets with the player object in between was the way to get the distance between these two objects, the expression builder can set those things up for you. And I've multiplied it by one to show you that you can treat them basically like algebra equations, where you can add, subtract, divide, multiply, and set them up in whatever way you need them to be for your game. So I'm going to make the blade rotor object rotate at a speed based on the distance from the player. But to bring it into the scene, I need to get it moving. So I'll use the action position on the blade rotor and make it equal to, and again I'll use the expression builder, the cursor's X position on the base layer, and it will give me the expression for the cursor's X position. Then I'll do the same thing for the Y position. And there we go. Now when I preview the scene, that router is following the cursor. So as you can see, as the rotor gets closer to the player it slows down because the distance to the player is less. And as it gets further away, it'll speed back up again because the distance is bigger. But you'll notice that the actual position of the rotor isn't centered. And that's because its origin point, the point that we control with the position action, is up here in the top left corner. And so I could move this to the center, and that would center it. But just to show you how to use expressions, I'm going to fix this problem with one. So the cursor X position minus the width of the blade router divided by two, and the Y position of the cursor minus the height of the blade divided by 2, because negative y is up in the game scene, will result in the rotor being centered on the cursor. And again, slowing down near the player, and speeding up as it gets further away. Now let's show a better game example. So in the game scene, I have these puzzle pieces that the character is going to pick up. So we'll start with a collision between the blue player and the puzzle pieces, and then we'll create a variable, call it pieces, and then set it as a number variable at zero. And we'll make it add one to the variable whenever the player collides with the green puzzle pieces. And then we'll delete those puzzle pieces. But in order to display that for the player to see, we're going to add a tiled sprite up here to represent each piece that gets picked up. Now there is a resource bar object that would make this process easier, but we're just using a tiled sprite to show you how to use expressions. So I have a green puzzle tiled sprite that will repeat when it increases in size. So we'll place that over the outlines and change its size down to zero. So now in the event sheet, we're going to adjust the width of that tiled sprite to equal pieces, the variable we just made, multiplied by, I could type in the width of the puzzle piece because it's the same as the image for the tiled sprite, or I can go to Piskel and check its actual width, and that's 40. So we'll change the width of that tiled sprite 
to equal the variable times 40. And now if the player runs into the object, we add one to the variable, change the width of the UI object, and then delete the puzzle piece. Now if you'd like to learn more about expressions and how they're actually used in a game, check out this video, or continue watching the intro playlist here.